I am passionate. Obviously. I'm passionate about people mm. and about them actualizing themselves and, and what, harming uh, themselves and harming themselves. And when yeah. I see this kind of thing coming through from a, a, this guy, is obviously a, a well-meaning person yes. who's yeah. been exposed to very very harmful ideas and has taken them on board i'd be far more interested in who this guy is as a real human being as an instinctive living personality rather than a, you know a, a four-lettered three no it was four yes. four-lettered four branded you know piece of nonsense so this question comes from bollingen boy and Hello. bollingen boy says so-called sensitive and, and, and intuitive men are fetishized to an almost absurd degree within popular culture, the arts, film, and in internet circles. But when these men are expected to function in the real world, these qualities are often dismissed wholesale as indulgent, weak, or unnecessary by society. Even though I would claim that this societal pressure has helped me individuate to some degree, it remains a perplexing discrepancy to contend with. Not all INFPs see society in such terms. I've noticed that a lot of INFP men restrict their potential for individuation by reading the vitriol they receive from society as an attack on their essential nature. Because of this, it seems that many forsake themselves to many forsake to simply existing as eccentric sub-masculine daydreamers that can't seem to fit in. Half-baked INFP internet stereotypes do nothing to help either, and if one spends any amount of time on INFP online forums, even though that type of stuff existed, to be fair, you will probably see this same mixture of self-pity, dejection, bitterness, and excuse. I feel for these men because I have seen this pattern within myself. I understand that this is a complex topic, and I'm sure this dynamic exists in other personality types as well, but how do these men reconcile their true identity with the nature of society as a whole without using their type as an excuse to not individuate? From what I've learned from Young to Live By, I suspect the anima may be involved. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Many thanks. Nice yeah. thing. Well, um, shall I... Uh, it, it's yeah, up okay. to you. I mean, the first thing that came to my mind is that, just following on from the last question that we've answered, that the, uh, this particular guy, and probably a lot of men, are victims of heterosuggestion. Mm. In, in so much as they, 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 they take that suggestion on from the culture about their masculinity, which, which would seek yeah. to undermine young men these days, and, and they allow it to take. And I would say typology and masculinity aren't, you know, they aren't the same thing. One no. doesn't equal the other, or not equal the other. We're talking about two completely different things, yeah. really. Yeah, feeling different. It's, it's issue with the translation of feeling right? yes like i think people think that yes. the feeling type is someone who cries a lot yes it's like that's yeah. not quite true yeah no um, no no i i, I agree i i i would say mm. that there's something wrong in an aristotelian syllogistic sense with the first premise mm. take it from the infp what the hell is an infp that you can generalize that out and then use that as a catch-all mm. to attract a whole group of, of men who are into self-emasculation yes. in effect because what you have here are if you like the, the, the kind of downside of a group like AA and AA do an awful lot of, uh, of good for people and I, I'm not denigrating that but the notion and using that as a kind of a framework for yeah. it uh, a proxy framework for it self-help groups for example drive people down yeah. through mutual identification you? as you say through uh, negative uh, hetero suggestion yes. from other people which then takes root as also suggestion yeah. what the hell is an infp that it means anything are you even an infp are you Outside of what's grown out of Jung's original model of typology, the construct does not exist and is not accepted by anybody. Mm. Which is why, for example, the Big Five is popular, because they don't accept that there's any mileage whatsoever in the, the Myers-Briggs or any of its derivations. So, in that sense, are you absolutely sure that you are even what you're defining yourself to be? So let, let's take that as a consideration yeah. first. Now, moving on from that. Suppose that you are an INFP and there is validity in that construct. Then we have to look at whether you are in fact an INFP within the framework itself, as in is the framework uh, acceptable? Okay, we, ex we will agree that it is, but are you an INFP or are you just functioning like one? Mm. Uh, who or what has influenced you to believe that you're an INFP? <coughs> that kind of thing. So all of that needs to be taken into consideration. Then the kind of things that you that you you bring up, I would never approach approach from a typological perspective. I've just thrown it out the window. Yeah. If this were a clinical situation, I wouldn't bring type up with a person who had those kind of feelings about themselves. Oh, yeah. What I would look at are instincts. 
I would say, what instincts in your life are being actualized? What are being suppressed, repressed, cafected, diverted? Where is the instinctive pressure in your life and how is that working itself through? Once you can answer that, you can then say, those things, the instincts and their ecology are being processed through a framework which you are self-referring to as being typology. And then you get the effect that you, you, that you are identifying, which I accept as a real one. But where's the journey? How did you get to this point? You didn't start life. You didn't fall out the womb, forgive me. Uh, however, you emerge from the womb, by the way, because there are alternative ways of, of emerging. Did, did you come out with INFP branded on your forehead or is this something that you've acquired through suggestion along the way? Yeah. If it's just simply to do with how you handle emotion, because as James was saying, um, people, mix up the idea of emotion uh, as in <clears throat> affect, mm. uh, feeling uh, as in a Jungian cognitive functions so-called. So what the heck, mm. what the heck is going on here that you actually believe any of this stuff that's being thrown at you? Mm. Bring it back down to basics. What are your instincts doing? That's the most important thing. Also, type, Myers-Briggs type, is nothing whatsoever to do with character. It's merely where it does work and where it is applicable, the vehicle for delivery of underlying character. That's all it is. The unconscious doesn't have a type. It doesn't. Uh, Jung's model uh, addressed consciousness, not the unconscious. Your anima, that's another field altogether, doesn't have a type. Your psyche does not have a type. It just isn't there. Uh, you have to reframe this and you have to get really real and focused. There's so much nonsense out there on, on the internet by yeah. people who haven't lived enough of a life and haven't engaged with themselves in a truly creative sense of discovering who they are and working that process through. That a lot of this theory is just damaging in and of itself. Oh, okay. yeah. I would bet if I met you, mm and you presented as an INFP, I would probably work out very quickly that was not the real you. And in a Jungian sense, what emerges is a persona which you have self-stamped or received as influence from other people that says you're an INFP. You then take on the pathology of an INFP, yes. as suggested, as Pauline was saying, mm. by other people. So get down to your instincts, get down to that. They're the determining factors that will release the real you from your genome across your lifespan developments. Set all of this stuff aside until you've answered that and then maybe return back to type theory and see if it's got any relevance whatsoever at all in your life. Uh, that would be my view. I'm oh. sorry if that's a bit overstated or passionate, but well, I actually, passionate I am passionate. I'm passionate about people mm. and about them actualizing themselves and, and harming what, themselves. And harming themselves. And when yeah. I see this kind of thing coming through from a, a, this guy, who's obviously a, a well-meaning person yes. who's yeah. been exposed to very, very harmful ideas and has taken them on board. I'd be far more interested in who this guy is as a real human being, as yeah. an instinctive living personality rather than a, you know, a, a four-lettered three, no, it was four, yeah. four-lettered four branded, you yeah. know, piece of nonsense. Absolutely. I mean, you have to, like I said at the beginning, ask yourself what, what's the advantage in the culture in yeah. getting men to believe this kind of thing yeah. about themselves? Yeah. And you probably come close to getting your answer at that point. And yeah. then it should be binned, like you say, yeah. appropriately. Um, Absolutely. And work on other things. I mean, what, what you, you, I think you do probably find with people broadly who are intuitive is that they're immensely creative. Mm. And we've said this before, um, in, in terms of their instincts, that they tend to have a dialed up seeking system. Yeah. So that they're, they're, they're out there, they like to be out in the world, finding new angles, having new experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and th they're usually incredibly creative people and they yeah. don't want yeah. to be contained mm -hmm. by things. But, yeah. but this this is insidious, isn't it? Oh, it, this, is. This, is, it is. this is a particularly nasty way yeah. of trying to undermine men and their yeah. masculinity. Oh, totally. Um, yeah. it, yeah. It's being utilised yeah. in that way, yeah. the, weaponized. The inference actually. is that there's something feminine yes. about there it is. And, and not there masculine. Is, which is just ridiculous. Well, you have a primary yeah. issue, which yeah. will be instinctive. Then you have secondary, which yeah. is this imposition of um, 
this this model mm. uh, onto that. Then you have a tertiary, a third issue, mm. which has to do with how you react yourself to the influence of the secondary imposition of a model on your primary nature yeah. as it is in and of itself. Yeah. So I would junk it, just forget it, get rid of it, throw it out the window, stop yes. watching these people on the internet mm. you know, who, who push the, mm. the, this multiplication of you know, theoretical nonsense yeah. about time. Yeah. They don't, they don't yeah. know enough about no. other things to no. apply type theory where it is applicable yeah. properly. Yeah. Yeah. So to make type theory work for you, you actually need to know an awful lot more yes. about a lot of other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you tend not to get that with people who are into type theory. They tend to be totally into it and to want it to explain yeah. everything yeah. to them. And it just doesn't. Yeah. So, so yeah. what I would say to <laughs> anybody <laughs> who's into Young, Go back to Young's collected works and find, if you can, where he says the typology is sufficient unto itself. Yes. He doesn't say no, it. He, doesn't. he never intended it for no. it to be used that way. No. If you think you're following Carl Jung, don't do that because it means you're not yes. following it Carl Jung. Means. So just get rid of it. Go back to the to the essentials of who you are. Yes. Uncover that, and then you'll find that your so-called reported type will probably change, and you'll feel a lot better. Fucking hell, Steve. Sorry, Jesus mate. That was right, that was a class. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. The Personal Myth Ultimate Handbook is now available for pre-order. For anyone who has a yearning deep in their very genome to become who they truly feel they should be, this guide is utterly indispensable. Pick up your copy today and make 2021 the year you truly begin to become yourself.